We back with another create mod tutorial. Today we're making automated diamonds and I have two machines here. They're the same. One has trees. The other one is uh, anti tree. And the reason for this is in other mods, if you have a faster tree farm than uh, normal trees, then I would definitely recommend doing that because the main bottleneck for this is how fast trees grow naturally. But with that, Let's get into the farm. If you didn't see, I have a Create Mod series where I make a bunch of different farms. And in that, in this last episode, I made a diamond farm that looked a little bit uglier than this, but still worked as anticipated. And this one is a new and improved version and is tiny. It is technically four blocks wide, including just a block that blocks the lava from tumbling away. Five blocks long, including one block that prevents the lava from burning you at all points and is four blocks tall that one's not about lava that's just that's just the height that you're gonna get it requires a infinite source of lava you can do this with an automated like cauldron generator with dripstone or a really big lava lake like in the nether or a bunch of other mods and then it also requires some oak logs that when i put a funnel on this will drop down and start making the farm work to talk about stress units you don't need to run this at a certain speed you can run it at full speed and it'll take 5600 stress units or you could run it at one RPM. This is turning. You could run it at one RPM and get tw use 22 stress units only. I don't know why you would do that, but you could. So it's up to you what speed you want to run it at. I, you don't need to do the max speed unless you have an infinite amount of wood going in. The max total speed for this farm is going to be 250 diamonds per hour at 256 RPM. If you balance it out, and you're at like, what, 112 RPM, because that's how many logs that you can produce, then you will get about 120 diamonds as well. So it is almost a one-to-one -one RPM to diamond output, which is pretty cool. For the schematic people that wanna click off the video as soon as possible, uh, schematics for both of these will be in the description. Just remember that we need lava, power here, and oak logs here with a funnel going onto this belt. Or you could also, set up another belt and have it go this way if I can do it and have your oak farm lead into this belt like that if you would like that as well. For the block by block tutorial today we're going to be building this farm which is the base diamond converter and the tree farm. The tree farm is uh, originally designed by Rocket14. I'll leave his link in the description to his channel. It's a super easy tree farm it's just a little spinning boy that uses a windmill and some rotational things to spin around. I added and changed a few things just because things have changed since this video three years ago, um, but it is largely the same. So let's get into the farm. For those building this, the block by block tutorial, the ingredients will be in the description as well, just below. And as always, if you have questions, leave them in the comments or go to my Discord. So we're going to start with the tree farm. We're just going to need some grass. We're going to build a five block wide kind of edge to the circle here. And then we're going to go five blocks in, so four more total. One, two, three, four. That is going to be our distance. And then we're going to have a windmill bearing in this center spot here. So in this center spot, let's just place in the windmill bearing there now. And then we can fill in the rest of the grass. So as I said, we're going to have a five wide area here. We're going to go out, out, and out one more. So that this one is now one, two, three, four, five blocks from that first line that we built. And we're going to go five over just like this. And then the same thing again, diagonal one, two, three. And then we can build out one, two, three, four, five. And we'll know that we're at the correct spot here. And then one, two, three, so that it is five across total. And then one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two. So it's just a circle that has a five wide point to it. That doesn't make any sense, but whatever. We're gonna fill this in with grass and you can obviously make this as big as you want. This can be a hundred by a hundred if you want. That's It won't grow after like, I think a radius of 70 or something, but you could do that if you want. I'm just having it be a, what is this? One, two, three, five, 11 by 11 here because it is plenty big. After we place all the grass in, I'm gonna place a radial chassis in the center, right on top of the windmill and glue one side of it. On that side that we glued, we're going to place linear chassis all the way up to the edge here. And then on the inside here, we're going to go up one, two blocks and then over like this. So that it makes kind of like a backward C. On the front side here, we're going to glue the front. On the bottom, place mechanical saws in front of it. And then on the back, we're going to glue the top bit 
and place deployers facing downwards. I would also recommend to rotate it so that the filter is facing outwards. And then we are just going to build it across to here. We're then gonna put in eight sails. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. On top of the sails, on this far side, we're gonna place it in two barrels, glue them to the linear chassis like this. And then over on this end side of the linear chassis, right next to the barrel, we're gonna place a portable storage interface. This one, we are going to also have to glue to the linear chassis itself. And then we're pretty much good. We're gonna come around here and right click the radial chassis with a wrench, bring the distance down to one. And then we're gonna do the same thing for the linear chassis, but holding shift. When you do that, you can bring all of them down to one so that when you hover over them, they should all be at one. Oh, one more thing that I forgot. The reason you have an extra mechanical saw and deployer is that I forgot two things here. We're just going to place a mechanical saw on the radial chassis itself. We're going to need to place one more linear chassis over here and place the final deployer there. And that's so that it can place on this block, this block, the one where the saw is on and the one where those linear chassis are, because otherwise those will just be empty. Then we're going to need to grab whatever tree you're going to use. I would recommend using oak, birch or something that doesn't grow a ton of branches. Um, and then we're going to put those in here. You could do spruce as well, and that will increase the rates of your farm just because spruce are taller. So you could do that. We're going to put those in the deployers and then we're going to fill up the barrel with as many oak saplings as you have. You just need two stacks at most. And then once we've done that, we can break a temporary gra grass block and then right click the windmill bearing and everything should start working. The benefit of this system is that the deployers will place the saplings in for you. You should also see that deployers get to the very edge block here. If you have like an extra set here, it won't fill in and you should see that every single block is being covered by an oak sapling. While that's coming around, we can get started on the actual farm. So we're going to build three temporary blocks up from the center here and then one block out. And then we're going to need to place a portable storage interface on that block facing towards the main tree farm. And we could break those temporary blocks and we should see that this portable storage interface is going to connect with this one. Oh, I might have gotten it one block too close. So back that up one more block. Oh, and you should see the portable storage interface connect for a second with the other one. Once we verify that that's working, we can get to placing the item collection bit. I would actually wait to place that funnel until pretty much the very end once everything is set up. And diagonally down from this portable storage interface, we're going to place a belt, one directly diagonally above it like this. Connect those with a belt. And then below this upper one, we're going to place a smart chute and set the filters to oak logs and deny. Obviously, if you're not using oak trees, you'll switch it to birch, spruce or any other tree that you're using and make sure you click deny. This is going to throw out any of the extra saplings, sticks, apples or anything else that comes from trees and just leave us with the logs. Then we're going to place in two shoots. Don't do that. We're going to place in two shoots vertically right next to the smart chute right here. And this is going to drop down just the oak logs into the place where they get smelted, just like over there. Directly below the smart chute is where we're going to place our lava. So we need to get a couple of temporary blocks like this so that the lava can go in. But before we do that, we're going to place in all the other blocks that make it not fly everywhere. So behind it, kind of directly under this belt here that's diagonally below this portable storage interface, we're going to place an encased fan directly below it here. And then a vertical gearbox here, another one, and a third one like this. And apologies, I messed up there. We're going to remove that block and place a normal gearbox and then another one right next to it. So it goes vertical, 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 normal, normal. Over on this side of the farm, we're going to place in the diamond crafting areas. So here we're going to place a basin. This is where our diamonds are going to be made. And then diagonally below it, we're going to place two shafts here that connect one to this gearbox, connect them with a shaft. This is going to make the coal blocks that come from a basin that we're going to place here in a minute over into the diamond one so that it can get crushed into actually diamonds. On this one, we're going to place a andesite funnel because it doesn't need to be filtered. And then on the other side here, we're going to need to place a basin right there diagonally and then a brass funnel here. On this brass funnel, we're going to set the filter to coal blocks only. And this is going to make it so that we can craft charcoal into coal and then coal into coal blocks in one basin. Then on the other side of this basin here, we're going to place another brass funnel and we're going to set the filter of this one to charcoal. We can then place it in the lava. We're going to place that there and it shouldn't spread anywhere. 
should all be encased by this block and then all the other components here. And then we can place in a final block here that will prevent the fan from burning you if you stand in front of it. Both of these blocks, as long as they're non-flammable, can be anything. You can put it up against a wall of a base or somewhere else. Now that we've gotten most of this in, we can now set up the diamond storage system. So we're gonna put two shafts here and then connect this shaft to the gearbox with another shaft. And then we're gonna connect these with a belt. This basin will dump stuff onto here, which we want. And then so will this one, which we don't want. So we're gonna fix that in a second. But we need to set this basin to diamonds only just so that it doesn't accidentally craft anything else. On this far side, we're gonna place a basin next to this, wait, barrel next to this basin so that the basin doesn't spew out stuff onto this belt. And then we're gonna place an andesite funnel going into it, and this is where your diamonds are being stored. Now we need to get in the last few bits here, lava, so we can actually craft the diamonds. So we're gonna place a pipe with a mechanical pump right behind it. We're gonna place in three cogwheels going straight up like this and then a cogwheel to the left, just like that. And directly below this cogwheel, we're gonna place a clutch, and this is where your power is gonna be coming into. You can obviously change this clutch around if you need. You can put a double gearbox here and a clutch like that. Just make sure that everything's spinning the correct way as the create mods rotation is directional. Now we can get in the mechanical presses for both basins here. We're just gonna shift click them on both of them like this, and then we're gonna make sure that they're this horizontal direction. And if they're not, just right click them and they will flip. We're then going to place a gearbox that connects this mechanical press with the belt and then a shaft that connects the gearbox to the mechanical press. Now everything should be connected and if we connect it to power, everything should be spinning and make sure that it's spinning the correct way. You'll know that it's spinning the correct way if there are red particles here from the fan or that these belts are spinning the correct way. You want these spinning upward. Now we're also going to need to get in an infinite source of lava. I'm going to do this using as I used over here, a creative fluid tank. Obviously, you'll need to do something else, whether it be get it from the nether or build a big old hole in your survival world and put fill it up with lava so that it counts as an infinite source. Now that lava's in, we'll see that it is being fed into the basin here. And now everything should be working. We can hook up the tree farm to the main system here by putting an andesite funnel there. And if we speed this up, it'll be going at full speed. You obviously don't need to do that. Now to verify that this is running, we're gonna wait until this gets around. We have quite a bit of wood since we've been building this. So we should have quite a few diamonds being made pretty much immediately. You should have only oak logs going in here. That'll mean that your smart shoot is working properly. You should also see that when they get turned into charcoal, this basin will start crafting them. Once we get up to nine coal, it should get turned into a coal block, which is what we're looking for. There we go. And when that coal block was made, it was brought over to this basin, turned into diamond and placed. I just picked it up, but placed in this barrel. We can watch that happen again. We're at seven pieces of coal, so just two more. And this does take a little bit of time since we're using an andesite funnel. So if you want to speed this up, you can always replace it with a brass one. And then it will go in stacks instead of just single pieces. We should now see that a bunch of charcoal is gonna come in here, get turned into coal, and then get turned into diamonds. There we go. So we have enough coal, but there is too much charcoal in here. So once we get through all the charcoal, it'll start making blocks and we should see a bunch of diamonds flowing in. There we go. And three diamonds made. And that was just with the wood that we got during the time that it took for us to get the wood, which is wild. And that's the farm. Really simple, really easy and infinite diamonds. It's passive. You don't need to do anything for this to work as long as you have an infinite source of lava and I guess stress units. But as we saw earlier, it doesn't need to be 55,000. You can bring it down to 22 if you so desire. And as I said before, the amount of stress units is almost perfectly correlated to how many diamonds you get per hour at max speed. So if you have an infinite amount of wood, like I would here, then we would get 250 diamonds per hour solely because that's how fast that this mechanical press can press four charcoal into one coal and then nine coal into a coal block. So again, that is all. And I hope you all enjoyed this video where we made automated diamonds passively with the tree farm that, as I said before, Thank you so much, Rocket. I'll leave his video link in the description. And that's all. So thank you all so much for watching. If you like this video, be sure to like. And if you're not already subscribed, do it. 
I have a farm leak because there's too much wood from the creative thingy. Okay, peace.